So Diego Coca has been sacked as Mexican national team manager, and there's a lot of celebrations happening online, but I gotta be honest with y'all. Personally, I'm not too happy about this. Not because I thought Coca was the right man for the job. Not because I thought Coca was a good manager. Not because I even believe that Coca could have turned things around, but because when I think of the top problems plaguing this national team, Diego Coca, Tata Martino, they're not in the top three. Let's break this down, okay? We can start with the positives. I think one positive from Sack and Coca is that the morale of the fan base is probably gonna go up. But I even might debate myself on that point. Do we want morale to go up? Do we really want to feel better about this national team? Why? Do we want to fill up the stadiums again? Do we want to all go run out and start buying merchandise again because Jaime Lozano's coming in as interim? So basically this boycott of the national team lasted one match, but I get it. People didn't like Diego Coca. They wanted him out. So sure, whatever. Let's just agree. That's a positive for now. Another positive is the players didn't respect Diego Coca, at least not what he was trying to implement. It was probably too radical and too fast for the players to catch on. And we saw them basically ignore Coca after the U.S. game last week. And the only other positive I can think of is that this Coca appointment was sketchy from the beginning. And I guess you could say it's good to correct your mistake quickly, but this could get really slippery really fast. Are we going to start sacking managers every time we lose to the U.S.? Because that's probably going to happen a lot moving forward. You could argue that Diego Coca's back five was a mistake, but he went away from that after the U.S. game. He switched to a back four. And this is just the other thing that frustrates me is like he only managed seven games. He loses once. He makes an adjustment, wins the game. Mexico should have scored four. It's not Coca's fault that nobody can finish, including Santa Jimenez. And then we sack him. Again, I feel like the public reaction is making me defend Coca when I don't mean to, to the degree that I am in this video. But I'm just putting it out there, guys. Like, no manager is getting these players to play better than they are. And this is where I get to things that are not solved with Coca getting sacked, namely the players in the player pool. You can watch every reaction video or live stream that we did on the channel under games managed by Diego Coca. And I kept saying the same thing time and time again. The team doesn't create enough chances. And when they do create enough chances, they don't score. And the defense, whether it's a back four, whether it's a back five, back three, whether it's Cesar Montes and Israel Reyes, whether it's Vitor Guzman and Johan Vasquez, they never look structured. They never look solid. I feel like I might be the guy on YouTube who was the most annoyed with the players as opposed to the coach. Like, I get it, guys. Mexico, for sure, less talented than the U.S. I mean, we are officially the underdog. That's, that's what it is going forward. But against Jamaica, against Panama, even against Guatemala, scoring two goals, embarrassing. It's not good enough, and it's not all because of flawed tactics or because an Argentine is managing the team. Like, those are cheap excuses. These players have been rubbish for going on four years now. Like, when is that going to stop? And the player pool itself is not getting fixed by appointing a new manager. The toxic interference by Liga Emeki's ownership is not going away no matter who we appoint as the manager. Does sacking Diego Coca really fix the toxic vibe that has permeated the entire pyramid at this point? It might in the short term, as in like the next couple weeks, but what happens when Jaime Lozano draws in the group stage at the Gold Cup? Everybody's gonna be back on Twitter saying, Fuera Lozano, I guarantee you, we could. it could be Pep Guardiola, it could be Jurgen Klopp, that first game where Mexico doesn't dominate or doesn't look great, people are gonna be on Twitter saying, sack him. It's a cycle that I've seen time and time again, and I'm honestly sick of it. I said I'd talk about Jaime Lozano, later in the video. I can talk about him now. Most well known for winning bronze at the 2021 Tokyo Olympics, beating a pretty good Japan side in the third place game. I'm okay with this, this appointment. Like he wasn't my number one after Tata was sacked, but this is what I will say about Lozano. If we are going to give Jaime Lozano time, then give him time. Even if Mexico struggle in the gold cup, we need to stick with this guy. At least give him 10 games. I mean, you cannot expect a national team manager who doesn't even get to train with the team that much to change a lot in five months like what we did with Coca. If we're gonna give Lozano a try, give him a try, a proper try. And if that doesn't work out, then we can look elsewhere. My number one dream person would be Luis Enrique, but I'm telling you guys, he ain't taking this job. I said in the live stream that this Mexico job is the hardest job in international football. You actually cannot win because the expectations and reality are disconnected. The expectation is that you were the best team in CONCACAF or at least challenging for that every single game, dominating the other teams when you play against them. And the reality is a player pool that at best is the second in the region. So why would a guy like Luis Enrique come in here and damage his reputation by not being able to meet those objectives? In my opinion, it would be a massive dub if whoever the next manager is, Lozano, Gareca is another guy that I think fans would have a big problem with his play style, but 
I would love Gareca to come into the Mexican national team or Almada. I, I think he would be a decent choice as well. The expectation for me is to absolutely solidify number two in CONCACAF and stabilize. Stabilize the program for a couple years, start planting the foundation to then level up and then eventually catch the U.S. men's national team, if that's even possible. But that should be the goal. We shouldn't be talking about winning the Copa America. We shouldn't be talking about a quarterfinals at the World Cup. We shouldn't be talking about dominating the United States because those are not realistic given the circumstances. Guys, this is going to be a very rough, very painful period in Mexican national team history. And if you are not prepared for that, you're going to have a rough time. I would be ready to be the third best team in CONCACAF for the next three to five years. And then we can talk about reconquering the continent. But this Mexican managerial position is a poison chalice. Godspeed to Jaime Lozano. He will have my full support, but we got to give this man some time. Those are my thoughts on the sacking. I don't mean to be a defeatist or pessimist. I just think I'm being real. And I think this fan base really needs a healthy injection, a steroid injection of realism. You guys let me know what you think in the comments. I'll see you on the next video.